Yes, well, I'll, uh, I'll be in touch then. Bye-bye. There's a telephone box not far from me, actually, just on the corner down the road. It's one of those K2 telephone box, you know, the sort of red classic telephone box designed by Sir Gilbert Scott in 1926. It's been there years. I think I've used it, actually, back in the day when a telephone call was two pence or ten pence, depending on how long you wanted to use it. Anyway, it went like that for a while, but uh, we had mobile phones, didn't we? And these telephone boxes soon became obsolete. And so they took the mechanism and the phone and all of that out. And some wag thought it would be quite fun to put loads of books in it and turn it into a bit of a library. And that lasted for a while. And then I noticed that disappeared and we had a defibrillator placed in there. Although then in time that disappeared too probably found somewhere more sensible to put it. And the telephone box in the end was then just a bit abandoned and being used by drunks on the way back for the pub, urinating in it or tramps passing by to shelter from the rain. Anyway, in time, uh, the uh, British telecom people decided it was probably better just to seal it up and let nobody go in it at all, which is what happened. And it stood there looking very shabby and what have you for years. There's an office adjacent to the telephone uh, a 1960s office, not particularly pleasant to look at, and there's a window that looks out right behind the telephone box. And in the window there's an office, and in the office is an accountant who used to work there. And he would work there uh, with the window open, whether it was uh, the winter or indeed the summer. The central heating in the rest of the building was on at full blast, and he didn't like that very much, so he kept the window open to moderate the temperature. Now the curious thing about this accountant is that he would hear the telephone in the telephone box ring. But there wasn't a telephone in the telephone box, but he would hear this ringing from his desk. And he found this very unusual at first when he started working there. But every time he got up to get out of his office and walk round out of the side door to go and have a look at the telephone box, there was no ringing and the ringing had stopped. And in time he realised that the telephone would ring at three minutes past five, pretty much the same every day, Monday to Friday, when he was working. And it would only ring three times, which he thought was curious. But after a while he got used to this ringing. Other people, he quizzed, said they, they thought they'd heard some ringing, but nobody was really precise about it. But he found this very useful because at three minutes past five he realised that was the time he went home. So he used this very much like an alarm clock. At three minutes past five, the telephone would ring, he would pack away all his accounting and stuff and get on his bicycle or walk or whatever it was and go home. And that was that. And then one day he was working away in his office and the telephone rang and he was about to go home and he felt this very strange feeling coming over him. There was something more compelling about the ringing on this particular occasion, something that told him he had to go and answer the phone, even though there was no phone in the telephone box. So he got out of his uh, from behind his chair and he went to the telephone box as quickly as he could, feeling that it was really urgent. But by the time he got to the telephone box, the ringing had stopped, but he'd found he'd already got halfway into the telephone box, which he thought was strange because it was supposed to be sealed up, or at least Every time in the past he'd ever tried it, it was sealed, but maybe it had broken. Anyway, he was standing inside the telephone box, wondering why that was the case. And then an even more strange feeling came, came over him. He started to feel this strange sensation in the pit of his stomach, as if something awful had happened or was about to happen. And whilst this was going on, he felt he couldn't leave the telephone box. In fact, he didn't want to leave the telephone box. He, he felt that he had to stay there. And because he couldn't leave the telephone box, he sort of cast his eye around it and realised there was a newspaper on the floor. It was that very day's newspaper, in fact, that somebody else had just obviously been in the box and just left it there. So with nothing better to do, because he couldn't feel that he would leave the telephone box, he picked up the newspaper and looked at it and he saw it was the very same date, the 23rd of August, that day um, of that day's paper. So he started reading some of the articles about this and then there was one of those articles towards the back, you know, the sort of thing that says this day in history. And there was an article in 1940 and he started to read it and it was a 
they had a picture of the very telephone box that he was in, which had brought his attention, brought it to his attention. And he looked at this telephone box and he started to read the article and the story went about a woman, supposedly a true story, about a woman who worked down the road a little further from his office. It wasn't his office, but it was a, a, a building further down. And this woman would go to the telephone box at around about three minutes past five in 1940 and as the time, by the time she got to the telephone box it had already been ringing and it would ring about three times and she'd managed to get it so that she could get to the telephone box on the third ring. She would lift up the receiver and it would be her husband on the line. Her husband was up in London doing some important work for the government. And then she would converse with her husband because they were separated because of the war, of course. And then she would have a nice conversation and she would go back and do her shopping on the way home. And then the next day she would go to work. And this went on for several days until the 23rd of August in 1940, right at uh, the time of the Battle of Britain, of course. Bombs were flying and dogfights were taking place and sirens were going off all over the place. On this particular occasion, she was a little bit late getting to the telephone box and when she got there she realised it had just stopped ringing. But she got in and she picked up the receiver and she found the line was dead. There was no dialing tone, there was nobody on the end. She couldn't make the call back and, she, and nobody could call her. And She was clicking, trying to get hold of the operator, but no one would answer. And she felt a really horrible feeling that something was wrong. Well, unbeknown to her, of course, well, I say of course, but unbeknown to her, the building up in London had been bombed. One of Hitler's bombs had fallen on it, blown the place up, and her husband had died. She didn't know that, of course. She just got this sense that something was dreadfully wrong. As she looked up, she was aware that the sirens had gone again and there were now enemy planes above and the British were trying to intercept and a dogfight had taken place. So rather than rush towards the shelters, she decided it was probably better to stay inside the telephone box. Well, that was a huge mistake. She shouldn't have done that because a stray bullet from the dogfight came down, smashed the glass and killed her instantly and she fell where she lay. Well, the accountant read this story and as he read it, he thought it was absolutely remarkable but that sense of foreboding, the horrible sense that made him feel compelled to be in the telephone box, had eased, so much so that he knew that he could leave the telephone box. And actually, he was very eager to tell his wife this remarkable story. He took himself out of the telephone box and then he stopped himself and thought, oh, I must take the newspaper with me, which he had left in the telephone box. So as he went back, he went to open the telephone box and found that he couldn't. The seal was permanent again. It was no way that he could get in. And not only that, when he looked down on the floor, the newspaper that he'd left there had gone. What a remarkable story. Hello, is that John? 